Hello, my name is Sean, aka Cobalt Fox Plays, and I'm here today with Steve Saylor, aka The Blind Gamer, to talk about Global Accessibility Awareness Day. Let us begin. Steve, it's great to talk to you. I remember finding an article about you for an assignment for accessibility, and from there, I started watching you on Twitch. You're an inspiration for being an advocate for accessibility, a gamer, and Twitch streamer. What got you started for being an advocate for accessibility? Um, so what got me started in being an advocate for accessibility uh, actually kind of started a little bit backwards, if that makes sense. Um, I initially started as a YouTube channel where I was mainly a Let's Player, where essentially my niche was that I was blind. And it was essentially kind of trying to be entertaining and funny and self-deprecating humor, which worked and, and people seemed to enjoy that. I mean, I was able to laugh at myself and, and when I saw that essentially people felt comfortable being able to laugh along with me, that uh, made it a lot easier to be able to create my channel and keep that going. Um, but then I got invited to uh, an Ubisoft UX summit that uh, happened here in Toronto uh, back in 2017, I believe. And I was invited to be on a panel with other uh, people in the industry. And essentially it was a summit that had a ton of different um, developers from all kinds of studios from across the industry, everything from Epic Games to Bungie to Rockstar to EA to Microsoft, to all, all, all in attendance. And I had no idea actually when I showed up that the entire day was gonna be focused on accessibility. And to be honest, I kind of really didn't understand 100% what accessibility meant at that point. I just thought I was there as just, hey, I'm the token gamer uh, in the room, or at least the the YouTuber of the, of the room. And that's kind of how I sort of saw myself. And then I was in the middle of the panel uh, and it was going great. It wasn't like I was sort of deer in headlights, but there was a moment that I had when I was in the middle of that panel, all my entire life, I've been telling myself that I sucked at video games. But at that moment, I had realized that no, it wasn't that, I sucked at video games. It was that video games sucked for me. And at that moment, I really understood kind of what accessibility meant was being able to create experiences that would allow people like myself to finally be able to play a game and not feel like I suck at it. And that's essentially kind of how I really started to want to become an advocate for accessibility. And I focused all my attention and all my content towards uh, accessibility uh, than just being a uh, Let's Player or gamer uh, on YouTube. Thanks, Steve. My next question is, what do you hope for in the future in regards to accessibility in video games? Um, that is a good question. I think what I would love to be able to see is a little bit more uh, awareness of accessibility in video games media side mainly because it's starting to kind of get to a point where people are aware of what accessibility is and how important it can be, but no one's really covering it and no one's really talking about it. And studios and PR uh, teams are not really like able to sort of like talk about accessibility or feel comfortable talking about accessibility in games uh, before the game comes out to kind of like market uh, towards disabled players. And that's, di that's difficult because a lot of times whenever we want to be able to like know as a disabled player, whether a game that's coming out is something we can be able to play. We have no idea until either after the game's out and people have already had a chance to play it, or we get excited and we pre-order or we buy it and we try it out in about an hour and a half in or two hours, we realize we can't play this. And then that sucks. And then it just basically is like a waste of money at that point. So I would love to be able to see like video game sites, um, and review and and people who review games and talk about games and preview games, that accessibility is just part of their coverage, so that it'll show PR teams that this is information we want to know, and if they're able to kind of give that information to players before the game comes out, and we're not talking about like the day before the or an hour before launch, we're talking like as part of their marketing lead up to the launch of a game. I'd love to be able to see that information be given because that information will drive to sales in games. That will, like, if, if people can be able to see an entire list of all the accessibility options, or at least all the options in a game, that is huge. Like, 
if, if we're able to see all that beforehand, we can look at it knowing what our own disability is and be like, okay, this works for me, this works for me. Oh, this is interesting. I may want to try this out. And if there's if more of those boxes get checked, then that's more likely that we're going to want to be able to buy the game and that'll drive to us trying out the game and playing it ourselves. So that's on the awareness side. On the second side, on the sort of developer side, is I want to be able to see a standard of accessibility options across the board so that like essentially that disabled players know what they're going to be getting from game to game no matter whether it's triple a or indie I'm not saying that i need we need regulation because if you regulate certain things about how like i like added to like an esrb rating that's like that we don't want that because then it means that people are just going to like do it as a checkbox and be like just sort of set the bare minimum so we want people to be able to innovate and keep revolutionizing the accessibility as we move forward but being able to have at least a standard set of options in games um, that are mo mostly common, like subtitle options, being able to adjust the size, the font, the speaker tag, the background of those subtitles, um, being able to have auto aim or target assist or, um, or like a a highlights around a character or high contrast mode uh, or larger text. Um, menu narration, remapping controls, um, ability to be able to adjust whether to tap, hold, or, uh, or, or like toggle a, a, a certain command. All those stuff are standard and are stuff that are most common uh, barriers for a lot of disabled players. So the more we can kind of add those into a game and then expand beyond those and iterate and, and, and sort of tweak and, and kind of change things as we go, if, as long as we know going into a game, okay, it's going to have these set of options. Let's see what sort of different things that this game has because every game is different. Every gameplay is different. So we can be able to at least know that there's a set of options there. And then that will prompt us to want to be able to still want to be able to buy a game. Uh, and essentially that can lead into uh, more sales. Again, it's just more, more disabled players being able to have equal access to a game. So that's the two things I would love to be able to see uh, in the future for accessibility. Well said, Steve. I completely agree with you there. Next question is, not just in games, but how can people spread the awareness of accessibility? People can be able to get spread awareness about accessibility by following diff like different advocates and, and different people that are doing, that are talking about accessibility and learning from them and getting involved and asking questions. Because a lot of times when we advocates and consultants are like talking online. We generally like people are afraid to sort of ask questions because they're afraid they might offend us. And more, like nine times out of 10, if you ask politely and you ask like with a, like, like you're actually curious, nine times out of 10, we're gonna answer and we're gonna answer as best as we can. So basically it's like, don't be afraid if you feel like you're gonna say the wrong word or you're gonna offend us uh, because of the way, I, at least for me, is that if I get offended by a question, like, and you're genuine and you're curious about asking, I like, I, like if I'm offended, that's a problem with me and not with you. So that's kind of how I sort of see it. And so if you're, if you're, like I said, if you're genuine and you're, and you're not trolling and you're, and you're asked, you, you're very curious about like how certain things work. Like, even if it's just asking like, wait, so I have a question, like how you, how are you as a blind person able to play games? I feel more comfortable answering that question instead of how in the, like how the like how the fuck are you able to play games if you're blind? Like I like that no, I'm not going to answer that cuz it's just like you're coming at it from like like you're you're already make you already have this preconceived notion of like blind people can't play games and I may not be willing to be able to talk to you. So but if you are genuine and you're curious, I'm totally okay with that. So I think it's essentially just being uh, like uh, spreading awareness of accessibility is just feeling like comfortable being able to ask questions. Um, and then as far as spreading the word of accessibility, awareness of accessibility going further, follow those people and then um, basically just share what the content they're creating. There's a lot of disabled creators uh, with it, like not only just on in video games, but just in general um, that are talking about web accessibility or game accessibility or just it, like in general in life, in real life, like IRL accessibility. So there's there's definitely some people just find that commu those communities and uh, and share what and share what they're like they're what share with their experiences and share what they're going through because that'll help um, us and it will help 
sort of spread the awareness. Um, so yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Well said, Steve. Asking questions is very important. And I do agree that it is the best way of spreading awareness. And last but not least, my last question, where can people find you on social media? Where can people find me on social media? We can be able to find me on Twitter at Steve Saylor. That's S-T-E-V-E-S-A-Y-L-O-R. Or you can find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash blindgamersteve. Or on YouTube, youtube.com slash snowball. Thank you, Steve, for taking the time out of your schedule to helping me with this interview. Uh, hopefully, maybe we can talk again in the future. My name is Cobalt Fox, a or Sean, and hopefully I'll have another interview coming up. Everyone, take care.